Hello and happiness. Welcome back. We are today back in the carpenter's office in California with some more boot content. Today we're going to talk about and look at some NYX handmade boots. I uh, originally was just having a lot of Red Wings. I had worn Red Wings my whole career. Uh, began collecting Red Wing mock toes and uh, Iron Rangers and Beckmans and stuff like that. And one of my suppliers was going to make an order for some Knicks for a bunch of people and said, do you want to get in on it? And um, it wasn't directly uh, from Knicks that I ordered. It was from uh, some other people. And um, I ordered the Urban Loggers in uh, brown waxed flesh. And that was the first pair of Knicks that I got. I ordered 10 and a half D because that's what I'm wearing in my most of my Red Wings except for the Iron Rangers and the Beckmans which I wear a 10 D. But when they were on their way to me, I got a message that said, "Oh, we accidentally got you 10 D and they're coming try them on." And so I tried these on, these Nix Urban Loggers in a 10 D and they fit absolutely perfectly. And that's how I know that I'm a 10D in the Knicks by accident. When I put these Knicks Urban Loggers on my feet, and if you folks from Knicks are watching or anybody else, I can tell you, you can use this. These, my feet went into four wheel drive. <laughs> Knicks handmade boots, four wheel drive for your feet. <laughs> that's what they are. And I just love them, man. They're just, I mean, I think I told you before, when you're with me, you're my best friend. Whatever pair of boots I got on, I just feel like they're my favorites. Today I'm actually wearing Flame Pandas, some Flame Panda monkey boots in green. And I will be doing a video coming up on uh, two of the best, absolute best Chinese boot makers. I'm waiting for a shipment and then I will be showing you some Chinese boots, including the Flame, Flame Pandas I have. NYX Urban Loggers Brown Wax Flesh Vibram 100 Lug Sole. You can see they got the screws and everything. I've worn these several times. You know that I have so many boots. I never really break any of them in or wear them out except for my work boots. And I, guys make comments, oh, they need more scars on them and stuff like that. Well, I'm trying to keep them nice. I'm, I'm a weird dude. I wear things out. I throw them away. I start on the next pair. But I do on the weekends on my Instagram and my Facebook uh, groups that I'm in post what I'm wearing I'm wearing Brave Star jeans today uh, in a regular taper, 15 ounce here in the summertime. Temperature went down to in the low 90s now from the uh, mid 100s when I got back from Mexico. So I'm wearing jeans today. Um, but uh, these are just my favorite boots when I have them on. They are some of my favorites. They're so beautiful. Look at that silhouette, man. Is that perfection in a boot? I don't know. Um, after that, I think I've talked to you before about the Rose Anvil cat that does the videos, cuts them in half. I love that guy. I love his, I love his videos. I don't watch all of them because some of that stuff I'm not into. You know, I, I watched the Doc Martens one. I, I knew that information that they feel great and for a while. Um, but, uh, I, I don't watch all of his videos, but he was going to collaborate with Nix and have his own boot, which is called the ND1. The letters N and D and then the number one, Indestructible One, kind of an acronym for it, kind of a clever thing. He is clever, he is smart, he is fun to watch, and he designed his own boot and I had to have it and I'm glad that I, that I got it. It has also the Vibram 100 lug sole has the screws. The red cross means that I think that the thread and the soles are more fire resistant than the normal thread and Vibram soles that they use. It has the more of a low block heel on this. And as you can see from the silhouette of that, that's like, a, they call it like a Cuban heel on those, which I really like. This low block heel if this thing was steel toe, it would be the ultimate work boot. It, it has kind of a flatter toe. I'm not familiar with all the lasts. I'm not a last guy. Some of the guys have all the last that they fit them better memorized. I'm more of an artistic guy. Um, 
It has the linesman patch on it. We're going to talk more about linesman patch in a minute. It is a wonderful boot. Both this and the Urban Lager, every time I wear them, there's no pain, no hot spots, no break in for me. I talk a lot about that in some of my groups break in. I think it's because you know people get the ankle biting. Oh, lace it differently because we get ankle biting, the three, two, one lacing or whatever that is. Um, I think doing construction, I'm used to having pain my whole life, these last 38 years as a carpenter, and you know it, it, there's a little bit of discomfort in the boots. It doesn't really bother me. Squishing of the pinky toe for more than 10 hours in a row is just excruciating. But what I do when I have a new pair of work boots. I just throw the old worn out pair in the truck and if it gets too bad, I swap them out in the middle of the day. It usually take a few weeks until they get really, really broke in. The ND1 boot, such a beautiful boot. Thank you, Roseanneville, for designing that. And the third boot that I got, I only have three pairs of Knicks right now. I had another pair of Rangers, I sold them. They were a little bit pointy-toed for me. I'm not really a pointy-toe. I'm not really a packer boot type of guy. These are P&W boots, Pacific Northwest. A lot of the Pacific Northwest have some packer boots, which is more of a pointy toe. Some of them have the toe bug, like a cowboy boot, that fancy stitching. I'm not really into that. I, I, I wore cowboy boots my whole life. That was what our dress boots were here in California, uh, coming out in a Western state from the time you're little to the time you're grown pair of cowboy boots is your dress boots. So I'm kind of like into the lace-ups and I have been since I've been collecting. A person online, a wonderful person from Canada, sold me the NYX James boot. That is my third boot of NYX. Also the Vibram 100 with the screws and everything. It has a linesman patch on it. I think I might have started out the same color like this other one over here. Um, I want to tell you that this Nick's James boot, I, I really love that silhouette and the look of that boot. It is really a nice boot. Um, they have, well, first of all, the linesman patch, I think, and the Indy one, in a lot of ways, was inspired by the James boot. Um, but the linesman's patch, guys also say that makes the boot harder to break in. I don't really have a problem with the linesman patch. I don't feel it. I have it on a pair of work boots that I, I told you before. They're uh, Wesco Highliners, I think they're called, that has a linesman patch. What makes those boots a little bit stronger and harder and stiffer is they actually have another sole, like a partial piece from the heel back into here that makes that stiffer and harder to break in. But the linesman patch, no, I haven't had a problem. This is the next James boot. It was a collaboration with a company called Zurich, I think out of Utah. They were either bought out or they defunct out of business. I don't know, I couldn't find much of any current information on Zurich, but NYX now collaborated with them on three boots and they're bringing them back. They're on their site right now. And they have this James boot in the eight inch. So it's gonna be more like the ND1 height. If you can see the difference there, obviously, there's a difference there on the height. It's gonna be that height. Um, this, the, the ND1 is all wax flesh. This is just a, a smooth black leather with wax flesh on the heel, which is super cool. So they have this same design, but in an eight inch. If I didn't already have the James boot, I'd buy it right now. That's the one I like. They have three of them for sale right now. I don't know if they have any left, but they're selling them. Um, so I would definitely encourage folks that are in the position to get a NYX boot, to get the James boot as soon as you can right now. Who knows when it'll ever be back. I was fortunate enough to get this one I think they're about 10 years old or less um, from a good friend of mine, um, a bootmaker, a wonderful person in Canada that didn't want these anymore. Um, that's about what I have for you as far as boots go today. I want to show you um, here in the carpenter's office, I actually have my, um, my grandfather's hammer is sitting around in here. It's got a little note tied with a string on it from my grandmother describing what kind of work he was doing. Um, he built uh, at least one store here in California, at least a couple houses in California. He was a farmer, uh, but back then there wasn't, you know, in the cities I'm sure, but, you know, carpenter by trade in the poor farm areas, they built their own stuff. They were a carpenter as well. So this is, uh, this silhouette is a, it's called a rip claw hammer. 
It's not a curved claw hammer. The rip claw is a straight. It's got a smooth face. It's about a 22 ounce. I don't usually use this type of hammer. It has the same original wooden handle. And it is says on it, true temper. And true temper was what we here used to call monkey wards or Montgomery wards. They're a competitor with Sears. Uh, they went out of business, I think, in the 90s. So I got my grandpa's hammer in here. That's a cool thing. I got a... It's a... Um, made by Crescent, like Crescent Ranch. I have his tape measure. It's completely chrome. And it's got a little button on it that retracts it. That Just like a little pocket. There's not even a clip on it. Little pocket tape measure um, for shorter stuff. Um, but what most of the guys were using back in the day before they had retractable tape measures was what we used to call a number stick and they just fold out and this actually I you know I have a whole bunch of them around here from my grandfather and from other guys that I worked with uh, this one is one meter is from my father-in-law in Mexico this is metric and it's chrome um, and it's made by Lufkin this one um, but they were made out of wood and aluminum I think this one's chrome steel it's a little bit thinner than a lot of them. But uh, when I broke into the trades in the early 80s, uh, the older guys were still calling the tape measures the number stick. So I don't know exactly where that came from. I mean, they were probably just straight sticks that uh, you know the ancients were using to measure stuff with little tick marks on them. Um, but yeah, they were still calling the, the, like the Stanley tape measures the numbers. Hey, hand me the number stick, kid. You know? So that's uh, a little bit of uh, tool history and stuff from the carpenter. As usual, I hope that you're having a great day. I hope that you can find peace and love and happiness. And if no one has told you this week or in this day that they love you, I love you. The carpenter loves you. And please react with love and forgiveness. Have a happy day.